have full closure on Canada's busiest highway. This time on Heavy Rescue 401. We're tapered off going this way, right? Truck on the median. Hey, Sarge, the tanker is leaking. Wine on the road. I don't know what we're getting into. Wreck in the woods. Ready, Freddy? Winds up Duncan. No way, Duncan. I'm going in. Oh. I got good news. And a lakeside rescue. I'm way too stupid to be scared. Is sinking fast. Stop everything. The ground's going on us. The snow is really bad. Wait on over here. What a mess. An early evening blast of winter is turning into a nightmare on the highways of Toronto. Right now, the snow's coming down pretty heavily. We've got the snow plows out. But even with plow crews fighting the battle, one careless move could create mayhem on the 401. We want people to drive accordingly to the weather conditions right now, especially since the roads are covered in snow. You are going to need that stopping distance. And by 10 p.m., crashes are piling up as fast as the snow. Vehicle into the barrier. Eighty kilometers west of the city. Might as well get comfortable there. You got a tanker upside down in front of you. Drivers heading in both directions aren't going anywhere. Let me know when we're all in position before we move anybody. Acting OPP Sergeant Tim Dunna is facing an overturned tanker on the median, shutting down the entire 401. We have full closure on Canada's busiest highway. We've got cars that are disabled now in the left. OK. This is a major traffic hazard right now. We are back right up into Milton. Traffic conditions are getting worse by the minute. This traffic is not moving. This is a monumental cleanup. I've never seen a crash like this before, the tanker truck that's on its side, filled with wine. That's a one in a million type collision. It's a huge challenge. We've come to uh, head home. That's crazy really want to get this lane moving. We're tapered off going this way, right? Yeah. This stretch of highway never sleeps. It's a main corridor to US-Canada border. There's constant transport truck traffic. Sergeant Donna's first goal. If I move my police car into our barrels, yeah. we'll start funneling this, get this moving. Trying to open one westbound lane to ease the backlog in at least one direction. So like two minutes? Yeah. Okay. But with the wreck straddling the median, even that will be a challenge. This collision could have easily been a fatality investigation. That truck driver was very lucky. A pickup was traveling westbound when it smashed into a stopped SUV, cutting off the tanker, which swerved and crashed into the median. Hi, sir. Everything okay? Yeah. Until some traffic can move, Sergeant Dunna checks on drivers stuck in the freezing night. What's uh, happening back there? Everybody's sleeping. It's been this in here for three, four hours. Yeah, I know. Just sleeping, literally. Well, this is why. It's backed up, most likely, into Peel region. People are hungry, tired. We need to get these folks home. Let's go, let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. It's nothing. The crew on scene will try to shift the truck to the eastbound side, clearing room for westbound drivers. We're rigging out right now, chain this tractor, and we're gonna put it over the other side. Okay, everybody move, please. Yeah, 
have lift off here. Wow. Guys, why's the tanker? Why's the tanker? The tanker is moving with the truck. Because it's still attached to the fifth wheel. With the truck out of the way, frustrated drivers can get on their way. We're almost ready. You'll be first, and you'll just drive carefully through. Four and westbound is now in the process of moving in the right lane only. Looks like we're moving here. Just one lane open. But for now, traffic heading in the other direction is still stuck. Now our next hurdle is the eastbound side which is closed down right now. And opening that side up just became a bigger problem. Hey, Sarge. Yep. I just want to let you know the tanker is leaking. Leaking what? Wine. Oh, my gosh. When the tanker shifted, the load started pouring onto the pavement. They need to offload the remaining wine to a second trailer. Once we get a tanker here, how do they pump it? In a hole there on the top of the tanker. They'll just siphon it into the next one. It's going to take about 30 minutes before it gets here. It's a dynamic situation. Oh, boy. OK, we got to wait. That's not good. Clean shot all the way down the way, sir. 300 kilometers down the highway. That's good. The southwestern end of the 401 is moving well. OK. But County Towing's Derek Dodoni Sr. is heading to a call off the highway, a remote job site on the edge of Lake Erie. We got a call from a customer here. Uh, sounds like he's in a bit of a panic. An excavation crew working a night job needs urgent help. I've called Garrett to bring the rotator out to me. Definitely going to take both our heavies. Lots of dangers working at night, number one, around the water, number two, around the cliffs. Just behind Derek, Eric Goddard is ready for a tough night. It's going to be one of those jobs where everybody's going to have to keep their head on a swivel to keep it safe and, and get the thing done. First, they have to make it to the scene. We've got to maneuver both heavy wreckers in between houses and large trees. So that's challenge number one. Once they can get a look, there are more challenges lurking below the bluff. Well, we're drilling the brake wall, and the track came off out in the water. Uh, couldn't get it up, so I had to call you guys. The hobbled excavator is dangling right over the water. The operator was extremely lucky. Had he continued that rotation over that wall, that machine's going to end up under the water, and there's going to be no way out. You ready? Go. And with the soft terrain, the wrecker and rotator could end up underwater themselves. We're putting 40,000, 50,000 pound trucks on a fresh cliff bank to pull up 80,000 plus. Make sure the teeth are down, then pull the stabilizers out. You definitely need to be properly placed on the first go. There's probably no coming back from a mistake ending up in the water. I'll tighten up the lines, then you can check the rigging. We've got quite the crew here right now, Senior is in his wrecker. And we've got Darren and Junior down below with the water right now, actually rigging a lot of the lines that we're going to need. It's going to be a big pull. And before they even run a single winch. Go, go easy. This ain't a good sign when it's caving in before we start. That part is literally the cliff giving away under the outriggers. Putting the wreckers on there is not a warm, fuzzy feeling for sure. If the ground gives out on the wreckers, we're going to lose the wreckers down the hill. We haven't even started, and the ground is caving in on us on the bank. And you can see it's starting to let go pretty much everywhere. That's one of those things we're not coming back from. You ready? Whoa, go easy! 
We haven't even started, and the ground is caving in on us on the bank. You can see it's starting to let go pretty much everywhere. On the edge of Lake Erie, the county crew is fighting soft ground as they start a hard pull. That 55,000 pound excavator could literally generate 100,000 pounds of resistance. And we're not gonna really know exactly what we're dealing with resistance wise until we start loading up these lines. Well, it's not 401, but it's gonna be a hell of a pull. It's mired in mud, it's in the lake. I'm just gonna run that boom in and get her up a little bit if you don't mind. They'll pull on a total of nine lines from the rotator and wrecker, easing the excavator upward before the ground gives way. I got good news. I'm way too stupid to be scared. We're literally running all the lines we can to the machine that we can reach it with because we need every bit of pull power we can generate. Hey, guys. But they'll need even more power than that. Can I get one of you to come on up? Eric wants an excavator operator inside the cab. You comfortable doing what's got to be done here? Yeah. We're going to actually use the excavator itself, so the machine will be able to put the hole on the ground and do a little bit of lift and drag itself. We just don't want you to lurch on us, and then you slide, and it shock loads all the lines. Then we lose our bite, then we lose all the tension, we got to start all again. It's always a risk when you have an operator in that machine. If we could ever do it without, we would. But unfortunately, it needs to be controlled. It needs to be operated. Darren, you good? Good. Senior? Ready? OK, let's get her. Tighten him up there, sir. Keep him coming. Senior, go! Oh. You got to tighten yours up a bit for me. I'm losing the ground here. We're only able to get the rotator straight onto it. The other heavy is kind of off to the side, which causes a little bit of problem. However, we want to pull this evenly, both of us. Can you snug up? Pull! Snug up. The lines are in place. We're pulling with everything we have, and it's still not moving. OK, Mark, you're yellow. Get that motion going is always the hardest. It's almost like having this excavator in a lake with a big suction cup on the bottom of it. Keep pulling. On your red. When you're dealing with the excavator, it's not like you've got a truck on wheels where the wheels are turning for you. Oh, we're Max. Dragging us back. Stop. We've got basically a big chunk of steel that's hung up on the wall. It doesn't want to move. Heading out of Milton, we have only one lane getting by. In both directions of the 401, we have a significant spill as well. What a mess. Back on the 401, west of Toronto. Aging way too much to be moving. With the offload tanker still stuck in traffic. The heavy crew is working to shift the trailer and stop the flow of wine. Slowly, don't jerk it, slowly. Pull the other one. Right, right. But even with the load now contained. Well, it's still full. They can't clear the highway until they pump it out. Hey, fellas, where's the other tanker? Hey. Hey, stay tight on this side. Our spare tanker has arrived. I am anxious to get the damaged tanker righted and on a flatbed to have it removed. Do your thing, guys. Thank you. But pumping it out will take more time, and early morning traffic is already adding to the long backup. I absolutely would love to have this highway open before daybreak, but this is a big job. We have to do it right, we have to do it safe. We're minutes away from rush hour. We still have drivers that are still stuck in this closure. They're frustrated and they, they want to get moving. It's empty. Oh, good. I don't need it right now with the heavy tow. 
Sergeant Donna can finally see the end on the horizon. That's what we wanted, nice and smooth. This tanker truck's on its wheels. We're gonna have it towed, we're gonna have a highway plowed, and we are out of here. It's been a long night. We are ready to get everybody home safely. Some good news, just west of the city, crews have finally cleared that rolled over tanker truck on the 401. Traffic is already starting to improve, just in time for the peak of the morning rush. We're maxed. It's dragging us back. On the side of the lake in Wheatley. Stop! The crew has made no headway with the mud-mired excavator. Everyone, just, just hold it a minute. It's always frustrating when you run every bit of winch line you have, and you're throwing everything at it that you can, and nothing is moving. Do we go under? They need to change the plan. What about if we put me on that chain, keep me separate? because I've got a better angle to here and take your dad's on the other center. Because that'll just change the angles up for us, right? We really only have one option. We're going to basically just take Senior's winch line and move him to one of the rig spots that I'm at on the far side. And then I'm going to put my lines to where he's rigged. I'm going to come down, Darren, and give you a hand. Just change the angles is literally what it comes to. I'm coming down, Darren. Concerned about Eric going down there with his bad knees and stuff. The ground's so treacherous. Oh, me. You all right? Yeah. For the past few winters, the strain of three decades working heavy recovery has started catching up with Eric. I've got extremely bad shoulders and knees to begin with, and I certainly don't need to be in a hole. It hurts more than I care to talk about. What a, what a hole there. Who'd have figured? Who'd have thunk? Who'd have thunk? Coming to work every day is difficult for me. You know, I really struggle with it. My wife is talking about me retiring early, um, young. We're going to go over top of your dad's because mine's higher. Yeah. I love him to death, but he's stubborn. He's got to go down and check his rigging. OK, I'll go up and get a shackle. And then you just got to do this right there. I get it. I just always have felt that sense of responsibility because I'm the guy pulling on the controls. I just know I like everyone to go home at the end of the day. I'm going to be able to hug tomorrow. I know. <laughs> you all right from going in that hole? Well, I won't like to pull unless I get to see it rigged. You tell us when he's going, and I'll tell Senior to start pulling. Hey, he's coming. OK, Junior, we're good. With Eric satisfied, the new rigging is safe for the crew. They're ready for the second round. Take it slow. Let Senior catch up. The hard part literally is that first 10 feet, right? He's got to keep helping, Darren. We're maxed. Stop! Stop everything. The ground's going on us. Hold it. It's literally the last thing we need at this point. Be careful. The legs are moving. Hold it. On the shore of Lake Erie, the county crew is losing ground. You see how close we come to losing everything? OK, everybody stop now. We've got to have some kind of land behind this wrecker, which is not going to be here much longer. Now it's time to think outside the box. And the boss might have an idea. Why don't he go right around and push himself down? Put the bucket in the water. He'll give himself lift then. Yeah. We need to use the excavator to do the lift. So we're going to have him swing around into the lake, bucket down to basically level out that excavator. Instead of pulling himself up, Derek wants the operator to push downward the other way. It's going to give it that lift over that brake wall that's so crucial we don't want to damage and make it a little easier on the pull with the wreckers. But the move will require the driver to swing around his boom 
and work over the water. Darren, how much of a free fall is he in if we lost him? It's a risky maneuver. Once he starts swinging around, the weight changes. If something goes wrong, it'll go really wrong. Hey, senior, his machine right now, if we lost it, is free fall. It'll be upside down. That's where you're gonna end up losing the operator if we let the machine go. You gonna move it when you're ready? Just do everything slow and watch the lines. Yep. He's gonna move the bucket now, guys. Okay, are we ready? Let's do it. Give it a pull. Hey, tell me, go easy. Easy. He's, he's into our lines. Everything has to be done really slow, keep the lines tight, and just make sure that we don't allow anything to go wrong. Easy. The operator has pushed free of the mud. Now he needs to spin back around. Time for his big boy pants when he picks up that bucket. Avoiding all nine winch lines. Slow, slow on our lines. Make sure he's careful he doesn't catch that rigging on the rotator. Go ahead. Okay, he's walking everything loose now, Darren. Yep, he's good. It's a real good feeling when you see the machine pop up over that brake wall and now it's no longer stuck. Oh, that's it. That's all they want. They want to put the track on there. The gamble definitely paid off to put the operator in the machine and it's a real big relief that it did. Pretty good, got her up now. Did everything we expected. If I can get Eric to quit walking down the hill, though, we'd be better. <laughs> Extremely relieved to be done this one. It's been a long day and a really sore day for me, so it's it's uh, it's time to pack her up and call it a day. Nothing's upside down. Nothing's wet. That's a win. Well, we're uh, we're gonna put the track back on tonight. We're gonna finish this brake wall. Time's ticking. We gotta get it done. My knees are. Despite his pain and doubts about the future, for tonight, Eric will enjoy the win. I wake up in the morning, I'm looking a little older, I'm struggling a little bit more, but I still love what I do, so I'm, uh, I'll be at work tomorrow morning. Let's go, let's go. Almost 800 kilometers northeast. Let's go to tow call, come on. A new day is starting at Cornwall Towing. Let's go. And a new chapter is starting for operator Mike McPhee. I kept trying to get on my feet, start walking. It took a while, it took a couple of months, but I never gave up. After breaking both his ankles, Mike didn't know if he would ever work or walk again. Well, you got three new helpers here, so I don't know what's gonna happen. Your job is always here. We're a small, tight-knit group, and there's no way I would ever consider just sending them packing because of something like this. Thank you, sir. Two or three hours a night, I put my foot up and I kept trying to make my toes move and stand on one leg for a little bit and just keep doing it. I fell down a few times, but I got back up and I went at it again. I just didn't give up. Now, he's fought his way back to the cab of a tow truck. Come here, come over here. Ah, that's my boy, that's it. But he's still a long way from his old job. Some people say, what are you doing driving a small truck? Well, I'm just taking it easy until I get back into big trucks. Make sure I'm healed before I start doing the heavy stuff. Today, he takes his first step. I got to do a boost uh, in St. Andrew's Church as a woman's uh, car broke down. How are we doing today, ma'am? I'm good, thanks. She won't start for you? No, I must have left the dome light on when I was in the church. Okay, you want to pop the hood and I'll put a boost on you? Okay. Yeah, I've got to do the change in doing this for beginners. You want to try it now, ma'am? Okay. Uh, Here we go. Thank you. I gave her a boost. Everything went good. 
but I don't want to be a light duty driver. I want to be a heavy duty driver. Hey, hey, you want a donut? I'm gonna go for a donut. Today was just the beginning, but Mike's already beating the odds. My goal is to just get back on the 4-1 and help the boys out on the highway. That's what I want to do. Well, I don't know what we're getting into, but I was asked to please bring a chainsaw with me. Anytime I hear those words, it's going to be a job. 80 kilometers west, Mike's boss, Duncan Cooper, is heading to a much heavier job, providing backup for another company. It's always different working with a new guy, but we're going to see what happens when we get there. And as Duncan rolls up, he can see the damage is severe. Make a new road. The front end of that tractor trailer was what plowed the path over trees and stumps and fence. There was not too much left. Mike? Duncan? Yeah, hey, pleased to meet you. Pleasure, mine, sir. Yeah. Is that what her farming or what? Yep. Looks to be a good one. Mike Spotto is a veteran Toronto operator answering a call from a customer. But the job calls for some extra muscle. I'm actually excited because you know what? Some of these guys have some great ideas and we trade ideas back and forth. Any fuel leaks? No, no fuel leaks. Good. Okay, so you're in charge of fencing and I'll go get my saw? Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Lots of trees, lots of stumps, fence, everything in the way. Big mess. But as Duncan clears the brush, there's a problem hiding under the semi. I see what well, looks like a tree stump or the base of a tree. It may cause some hangups. There's a lot of hidden unknowns. We don't actually know what's under there. Our biggest concern here is watching the fuel tanks. Fuel tanks are in good shape. They're not ruptured, they're not leaking. So we want to keep it that way. See the other side? No, not yet. It's right up on top of a stump there. It's going to be a real bitch, eh? Yeah, it is. Bad. Nah, he's fine. He got to get in a left lane there, but uh, make sure that down my deck. Big mess. It's right up on top of a stump there. In a field off of the 401 near Prescott. It's going to be a real bitch, eh? Yeah, it is. Duncan has discovered a threat to the underside of the mangled tractor. We know there's some stumps and stuff under this unit. Like, we have the environment on our mind the whole time. Should pull away from that if we just do a straight jackknife right off the bat. We're going to throw a chain around the frame, start giving her a yank. We're going to winch it out into the nice grass. Then we're going to cage the brakes on the tractor, because right now we can't even get at the brakes. Mike will pull the tractor sideways away from the debris. Good man. I'll wait here, I'll watch you. Just go real slow for the first bet. Duncan will need to watch for any sign of damage to the fuel tanks or oil pan. Feeling strong? There you go. That's a heavy one. And a broken stump is holding on tight to the chassis. Hey, Mike. I can see you starting to lean, so why don't you just pull right up beside you, just run one line out, just give you a hand. Yeah, I'll just give you a little bit of hand just to get it around the corner, and then we got it. Yeah, yeah. It should break free and start its trip back to the side of the road. Oy, oy. Come on. Okay, guys, clear. Watch out. Huge difference, eh? 
That's what you want right there. You want that coming up just like that. I think your winch might be faster than mine. Remember that tree stump we were talking about? That's it. Now, they'll have to fight the weight of the fully loaded trailer. I love these guys. What are you loaded with? Boxes? Yeah, I don't know. Boxes of bricks. Even worse, the air supply for the brakes suffered damage in the crash. We have to release the brakes, but there was no good place left in the front of the truck to run an air supply to. The air tank was buried underneath. Okay, we're gonna get my other line out, and we'll go over to that uh, dolly as well, okay? Ugh. All they can do is try to wrench the semi free. I'm gonna go a little lower too, I think. That way I'm not tipping. Ready, Freddy? Yeah. This thing's coming out of here. Bring her, man. She is moving. Come on. No. No way, Duncan. I'm going in. Something's not right here. We, we got to see what's going on. Why is this giving us such a hard time? She wedged in her gut. Oh. See, the snow's starting to come in now, eh? <laughs> I thought we were going to get the sunny weather for this deal, but I guess not. 500 kilometers west in Bruce County, Bryce Weber is heading to work. There's days where it calls for light flurries and you can't see the end of the driveway, so it's unpredictable. Bryce is the lead op of Aces Towing, based in Mild May, where storms blow in off Lake Huron. We focus mostly on the heavy duty work. We do a lot of farm related work, transport and towing and recovery. And they built a strong reputation, working alongside some of the top companies in the province. At least you brought the best bags on the market. Oh yeah. I met Bryce about six years ago. Anytime I get a job up in his neighborhood, I'll give him a shout. All right, let's go, Sparky. Bryce is a friend of mine, also a colleague with us. Got her. Driver requested new Michelins for the old boy. I run the business with my mom and dad. Dad's in a truck full time. He'll be 67 this year. Speaking of which, there he is. Well, seems to be working. We have our days, it's like every family has their days, but we seem to work around it. We got him cornered. I'm old school, I guess that's the problem. He's new school. <laughs> you might want to put some safety shoes on though. <laughs> the sandal crew. And my mom's in the office. What do you want? Seven nuts out of the kickbox. What can I get? Nothing. You can supervise. Dinner. There's good things, there's bad things, but <laughs> at the end of the day, we are family run and yeah, all my guys are like family too, so great group of guys. Today, Bryce and crew are heading 50 kilometers north toward the shore of Lake Huron. Is it on the right side up here, Scott? Roll up on the scene and I see a tractor trailer. It's down 10 foot ditch. It's laying in four or five feet of snow. What are you thinking? Looks like the ditch gets steeper. Yeah, that's a nice tank. Stinks. <laughs> the tanker is loaded with 45,000 pounds of yeast that must stay inside. It's a food grade load, it's an expensive load. The company's requested that we get it out loaded if possible. Crew members Garrett and Scott get to work on shovel duty. We're gonna clean as much snow away as we can. It makes the job go easier and smoother. 
Like right there's ground. Yeah, I did too on the other side. I'm hoping we can get under like that. Look at that ditch, that's straight up. I think the road here is gonna float hard doing this. I really thought it wasn't quite that steep when I was full of snow. I know. Junior op Caden makes room for the crew to work. He's got the easiest job and he's the youngest guy here. <laughs> that is a deep ditch. Let's go to the front, the other side, and see where we're gonna hook to. And as they get a better look at the cleared terrain, they see just how tough this battle will be. Oh, man. Once we got digging in and realize how steep it was, that unit is going to fight us all the way up. We've got our work cut out for us. It's going to be awfully hard to pull. There is ground screen. You're off lane now. They're getting ready to pull a truck out of the brake back there. On the 401 west of Cornwall. Not going, Duncan. Oh. Duncan and Mike have only gained inches in their fight to pull the semi free. The brakes are locked and it's just holding us. It's pulling two great big tow trucks backwards. But when Duncan takes a closer look. Hang on a sec. He sees that all their pulling might not have been in vain. I can get at that. There we go. From the first time we pulled to the time we stopped, it exposed a good spot to run an air supply to. You need a pair of vice grips and a fitting. We're going to uh, attempt to run an air supply to the tank. Hope for no leaks. It will only work if the lines running to the brakes are still intact. Let's pray for no air leaks. Hogie dogie. Ready to go. Try again. Come on, baby. There we go. That's what we wanted an hour ago. Once the air supply went to the tractor wheels, it released all the brakes. We started winching, it just popped out of there like nothing. Yeah, the truck just bit real good right here. Yeah. Bang, and then that was it. Finally broke loose, so okay. we're on our way out of the ditch. Anytime, buddy. quite that difficult to get going, but surprise. Each job presents a different challenge, and I feed off that. It's something new every time. Thank you, Duncan. Thank Appreciate you very that. much for the call. Pleasure working with you. It was a blast, man. See ya. That road still closed up ahead the there? I got a tanker rolled over in the ditch there, uh, Pat. Back north of Mild May. I'd rather overrig it. Once we get hooked to this, we can't let it go. Bryce and the Aces crew have cleared as much snow as they can and are hooking up for the lift. Two rotators will be handier today. And with almost 50,000 pounds inside the tank, there's another complication. This trailer has got stainless tanks, but it's got a stainless frame and an aluminum frame. Aluminum is soft. You can pull a chain through aluminum very easily, so you keep an eye on that. But there's no way to avoid running some of their chains around the aluminum framework. Bottom side or top in the suspension? Bottom. I want to slide it. OK. A lot of lines. The rotator, wrecker, and flatbed will drag the truck and trailer close to the road and then roll the tanker upright. Let's do this. Biggest thing we got to keep an eye on is that cross member where the chain is. If it starts to bend or move, it's a critical attachment point for us on the front of this thing. I'm going to start.
want to go slow. See what it does. There, it's coming. We're watching for things like the strap, and we start to wrinkle the skin of the tank. And then where we've got our chains around on the frame, we we're into some aluminum. You're not sure if the aluminum's going to start to rip, so you keep an eye on that. That is steep. Just keep pulling harder on your top one for a minute. Oh. Stop. I gotta start. There, it's coming. On the edge of County Road 17, Bryce Weber and crew are trying to coax a loaded tanker to the pavement. That is steep. Without ripping it apart. Stop. With the truck now close to the road, Bryce wants to adjust the rigging before they upright. We got a 80,000 pound truck, we're gonna have to lift 70 of her. We're gonna need some wicked lift here. Wonder if I can get another strap under. Make a big V out of it. That'll go. We've got a 26 foot strap and we're gonna basket it to make it a 13 foot strap. We get a wider footprint on the trailer, and then it'll also pretty well double its rating. Let's see what it does when you boom out. Okay, bring her a bit. The hard part is, is it's over 90 degrees. It's over center, what we'd call it. So your initial lift is a hard one. It's probably gonna come a foot or two before it bites. It's gotta pack all that snow in. We want it to dig into the snowbank in the edge of the ditch to get it upright, because if we get it right up on the flat, you run the risk of it sliding towards you. Hey, Scott, we'll be able to use the boom. It's biting. Just feather the drag. Hang on, Scott. I just want to keep these tight when it comes over so it doesn't slide down the ditch. Tankers are always a fight. I don't know what it is. They're so slippery. Can you bring the front end more? We'll do a tire. A little more. That's good. The tanker is upright, but still leaning. They need to slide it onto level ground. Okay, Let's see if you can boom in now. I'm gonna try the same. You better get tightened up on that. I don't trust my back cross member too much. I gotta see if I can get a little bit more here. A little more. That's good. You're pulling it out, Garrett. Hey. <laughs> We've done what the customer asked. We got the full load. We haven't touched the seal. So we'll be delivering it within the next hour. <laughs> Hit that, a bastard. Now we got to run tow it. The blown tire might require the crew to tow the truck away. But with no serious damage, this hard fought battle is a victory. Very happy with the way that went. Take some time, rig and re rig. And get it where you want it. We got a great bunch of guys. When you do a job like this, it just kind of shows you how well you work together. Good. Can't go off of it. Back towards you. Looks like the weather's starting to come in here now, so we'll get this done and get home. Dad's been holding the Ford down for us today, and <laughs> he's run off his feet, so we'll give him some support <laughs> when we get back. time on Heavy Rescue 401. Everyone's thinking it's all back to business and back to normal. Well, it's not. A heavy storm. Let's just kick this all off the highway here. Gets carry kicking. It's not going to be an easy one for sure. 
A tight job. Let's do this thing. Tests a tight team. Hold on. Drive. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, and a load of coils. It's total carnage. Ties up the Campbell crew. Keep pulling. I am. 